Hey guys, did you know that it's actually possible to stargaze in the Elder Scrolls games? You've actually been able to find constellations of star signs in the night sky since Morrowind. Check this out, that's the warrior star sign, and over here is the tower. Games since Redguard have even come out with legitimate star maps that you can actually use to locate constellations. The skybox at night has an interesting mechanic too. Did you ever notice that the night sky comes at an angle in Skyrim? There might be a lore driven reason for it, involving Azura. Let's look at this and a few more interesting things about Tamriel's night sky. First, here's a brief overview of the game's skybox history. Elder Scrolls 1 actually introduced us to the three main star signs at character creation, but you can bet it had a pretty basic skybox compared to its successors. I made this gif to show how the night sky changes over time. The stars in the sky move at 15 second ticks, and there are no real constellations, as far as I can tell. Daytime music began at 6.22 am, and ended at 5.44 p.m. The background mountains would also enter at approximately 6.19 and would stay there until you fast traveled or exited the overworld at night. Fun fact, Nasser and Secunda also make an appearance just after dusk in the northeast. Daggerfall expanded upon Arena in a lot of ways, including night visibility dependent on random weather. Yet the skybox didn't actually move. Instead, when the night sky was visible, every time you rested or loaded into the overworld at night, the night skybox would change. I think this is seemingly at random. Furthermore, each of these seemed to be copy-pasted four times over each cardinal direction. So probably no constellations yet, unless there's something hidden in there that is copy-pasted. Battlespire was next, kind of just a dungeon call though and not really worth considering. Redguard was just kind of an instance where there was a nighttime scene, it's really not worth considering for the skybox, but oh we are definitely going to talk about it when we get to the constellations because it's pretty exciting the information we do get out of Redguard. Then we have the Elder Scrolls Morrowind. Now, the Elder Scrolls Morrowind started this true dive into the next-gen world games. It actually used this star map found in Redguard to plot its points in the night sky, and I'll show you more about this in a second because it's pretty cool. The night sky box rotated around the center horizontally. When it disappears for daytime, it then reappears for the night. It looks like it never stopped its rotation, basically. One full rotation of this took four in-game days. The Warrior, for example, will appear roughly in the north, east, south, and west, respectively, over four nights. Then Oblivion got way more interesting. The skybox tilted on its axis about 45 degrees, and one rotation took two in-game days now. In this case, the warrior rises in the east on the first night, the lord rises on the second night, then the warrior, and so on and so on. The Ori DLC introduces a new and completely accurate way of looking at these stars, which means this is an actual usable in-game star map. The warrior, as we can see, is rising in the east. The lord is doing the same about halfway through. Each rotation on this takes about 5 minutes and 30 seconds to complete, regardless of your time scale, which means if one rotation represents a 2 day time period, according to the Ori, 24 hours in game should be 2 minutes and 15 seconds of real time. Skyrim continued this trend, but now each rotation equals one night. I'll explain why this is cool later, but my speculation is that it has something to do with what's called Azura Star, a star that is only visible at dawn and dusk. Also, a higher res night sky. So if you'd like to try this for yourself, the easiest one to find by far is the mage. All you have to do is look up and find the cluster of three. That's the orb of his staff. From there you can connect the eyes, his robe, to his arm, pointing the way into the night. Try cross-referencing material found on the UESP wiki to connect all your dots. From here, you can find other stars by browsing the dwarven star chart released with Redguard. The wiki has all the help you need to translate the symbols. From there, all you have to do is turn in the right direction. Some, especially in Skyrim, are harder to find than others. They definitely exist in Skyrim, but some seem a little ambiguous. There's a couple different mods you can use to help you out if you get frustrated like I did. The Tower Constellation is a good example of what a mod can do. 
you can definitely see there's something going on there. And it might not be completely clear until you've modded your skybox a little. I don't personally play with these mods on the regular, but they are useful tools to visualize things. And you can try different configurations to see what works for your playstyle. Understanding the star chart is a bit tricky at first, and each symbol means something completely different. Why are these blue, for example? The lore can actually tell us. Let's talk about where these came from. So, Redguard came out with three maps on the night sky. This is the first account of constellations really being given a place in the Elder Scrolls series, actually, and also incidentally when Dwemer lore started getting more fleshed out. This one is of Yokudan origin, which basically just means it was from the ancestral homeland of the Red Guards. The locations are in place, and will be continued with this next one, of Dwemer origin. Each symbol corresponds to a star sign. We are familiar with these in the Elder Scrolls games. Let's look at it. Each dwarven symbol can be translated. In Red Guard, they appear in the corner of the telescope. But luckily we have some help from the internet. Here's a quick overview. The yellow here are what are called charges, the blue being guardians. Each guardian has three charges under the wing based on their class. They protect them from harm. In the sky, this harm is the serpent, which moves, different than the others, preying on them. Looks like in this picture the lord is about to get taken a bite out of him. Besides the serpent, each star sign also has a month attached to it, and this is because the sun will allegedly rise near each constellation during a given month. Tamriel's calendar is, in this case, constellation based. The thief, for example, reigns during evening star, the darkest month of the year. It'll have a clear view of the ever-moving serpent on its opposite side of the sky. While constellations don't rise with the sun on their given month, you might be surprised to find out that the night skybox does have a yearly cycle, like in real life. Every night shifts the rotation of the skybox just a little bit. This effectively gives each month a different direction to look to find your favorite constellations. In this experiment, you'll notice on the fifth of evening star in the year 201, the warrior roughly fades with a sunrise in the southeast. As we continue through the months, the sky here changes. The sunrise is the same, but we don't see the warrior here until the exact same day of the next year, 202. At first I thought this was a glitch from messing with the time scale or something, but I continued to run the experiment over some years with different levels of time scale intensity, getting the same result. Each month giving a different set of stars in the southeast until gradually the warrior appeared again during evening star. That's pretty amazing. But it gets better. On the 21st of Evening Star, the real life equivalent to Winter Solstice, the steed is given exact equal time in the western and eastern horizon. Why is this significant, you might ask? Some leftover lore might be able to tell us. Azura's Star also called the Twilight Star, appears briefly at dawn and dusk on the low horizon below the constellation of the Steed. This is from The Anticipations, an in-game book in Morrowind. Can we find a Zero Star? Low horizon below the constellation of the Steed. I'll be using Skyrim Special Edition with Skyrim textures redone to make the constellations a little more clear for the video. So let's clear the weather here. After dusk on the 21st of Evening Star, the Steed constellation exists equally high here in the west as it does in the east, theoretically giving us the best possible viewing chance. So because the skybox is at a 45 degree angle, this area at dusk will be in the same place as this area at dawn. So Azura's star, according to the anticipations, must exist in this area. Of course, nothing is jumping out, but we might imagine it could be one of these bright ones. Could one of these be a Zura star? It might be a stretch to find this star, but the fact that they were consistent with dawn and dusk horizon being below the steed, that is amazing. Try and check these things out for yourself next time you're playing, and before too long you might start seeing star signs everywhere without much effort. I want to know if you've had any experiences with the night sky in the Elder Scrolls games. Did you learn anything? 
I wonder if they'll make this happen in future games. If you have some amazing Elder Scrolls cosmology findings, or just want to tell me your favorite star sign, I'd love to read about them in the comments below. Show this video too if you think you know somebody who might be interested in some of these features. Keep your curiosity alive. Until next time.